All right, we are working on rear disc brakes. If you have rear disc brakes, uh, or any disc brakes, you have to compress the, uh, the, the caliper piston in order to fit the new pads on, right? And on the rear disc brakes, it's very common these days that there is an integrated parking brake into the caliper. And if you have a big monstrosity on the back of your, your caliper, chances are you're going to need to twist the piston to compress it. All right, let's get a better look at this. So what I'm talking about is this is this car has an electronic parking brake. So it has this electric motor that goes into some sort of reduction gear drive and it drives a screw that that pushes the uh, the pads against the rotor and it and it provides parking or emergency braking, right? There's also mechanical versions of this where you have sort of a lever on here that gets pulled by a cable and and if you have any of those like, like, you're going to need to twist the piston, right? So another way to tell for sure is, is see how this piston has these little notches in it? I mean, it wants to be twisted, <laughs> right? Right? And, and here's, here's the good news. If, if you're watching this video while you're trying to do this and you're stuck and you don't have the right tool, because there are tools for this, I'm going to show you. I just have some needle nose. I'm going to... Give it a twist. Hee. So just with a firm grip, I'm getting in those notches. I'm going to twist it. I'm going to push it. So it's as easy as that. Oop. Slipped. Try not to slip. You don't want to mar up the surface. <laughs> Let's look at the tool options. So this is a disc brake caliper caliper tool set this is a rental tool that i got from o'reilly's cost sixty dollars to rent it right and it has a couple things it has uh th this plate this compression plate and then it has all these different uh tools to compress it the one i need is is this number e <laughs> this number e and and you get this tool where it will compress and spin and it operates clockwise so here's how this thing works you can slide it in there and you align your notches and then you can uh, spin that back to put the the compression plate on there and then you just twist it all right check this out so it compresses it and it twists it at the same time And you'll go till it stops, but you don't want to go like super hard on it. Don't don't try to break it, right? <laughs> just just go till it naturally stops. Let's see. I slipped off. Ooh, so that's an interesting feature. So it 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 uh it compresses twisting it compresses it further than what the threads can can go. So, so let's reset that. Put the tension back on it. That's cool. So, at least the way this one is designed with these, you know, fairly fine threads, uh, it won't overdo it. There, and it just it just stopped, just like that. Let me show you one last tool. So this little cube, it has all these little notches on it, right? And the, the notches that fit this particular piston, this happens to be that. This fits on a ratchet, and uh, then it lets you you twist it so so I mean I guess I'm already all the way down let's go backwards then go backwards Oop. and I can go forwards until it stops this tool uh, I bought this from O'Reilly's also. This is a $8 tool. You can probably get it a lot cheaper online. So just to recap, you know, if 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 your caliper has has a couple notches in it and you can use a different tool to twist it, that can save the day, right? You, uh, this tool is you know pretty cheap. It's it's not very good, <laughs> but you know uh, I, I thought the pliers are actually easier than using this little cube thing. The problem with this cube thing is it won't fit all vehicles. Look at the sizes of of some of these these uh, compression things, right? 
Uh, okay, and, and I guess this tool is number D. <laughs> number D might just be for straight compressing, uh, like a front a front caliper, right? But uh, look at this big mamma jamma here. I mean, that's probably for uh, a truck, you know, that has has a big giant piston on it, and it only has one little notch, and uh, that would that might be something you couldn't do with your pliers, and I think it would be something you definitely couldn't do with with this tool, because it's just too small on all its various options. So, uh, you know, when you're doing your rear brakes, uh, take take a look. See, see if you need these tools, and uh, and if not, maybe some pliers can uh, can save your butt. But br brakes are kind of an interesting subject. In the olden days, they had a, a single uh, master cylinder, a single cylinder master cylinder, and then we got uh, dual master cylinders where the rear brakes were on on one line and the front brakes from the other line and, and the purpose of that was to prevent you from having catastrophic brake failure because with a, a single cylinder master cylinder you uh, get a leak somewhere you could lose all your brakes right and then with the the dual cylinder master cylinders uh, you'd only lose half the brakes at a time and and then the the parking brake is has to be a different system than that uh, so it's typically a a mechanical like with a with a cable linkage that, that that way if you have catastrophic failure you lose both sides of your master cylinder you lose your front and back brakes you still have a mechanical thing you could pull or ratchet up to help bring you to a stop or an electric variation like what's on on this car where it has a little electric motor you you, you poke the button and it and it spins a little thread in and it compresses your uh, your 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 pads on your on your rear brakes here for a long time cars had had drum brakes in the back and and the way the drum brakes work they have shoes that expand outward and push on the inside of of a drum and uh and so the the mechanical handbrake was just a cable that went to a lever that 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 expanded the brakes and and so in the early days of putting uh disc brakes on the back of a car they they a lot of companies went with a dual system where you had drum brakes uh, inside of the rotor and then you had a caliper that clamped on the rotor. So, so the mechanical brakes was a, a second set of shoes inside of this little housing, right? And then nowadays, uh, I was looking into this, turns out Tesla, uh, they, they have a regular disc brake caliper um, for their rear brakes and then they have a second caliper which is the uh, electric parking brake. So you actually have two calipers on, on the same disc, and that's how Tesla tackled it. So the, the point of all this is, is that, that your situation may vary, but more likely than not, if you have your parking brake integrated into your caliper, you're gonna need to twist that puppy in there. And based off of this tool, it looks like almost all of them, if not all of them, will be a clockwise motion for twisting it in. So I hope that was useful to you. Uh, have a good day, y'all.